Hey everybody, how's it going? Happy New Year, Doug. And to you. Let's see, Ginger. Hey, um, Javier, you, you there? Yes, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And Tommy, are you there? I'll wait for your message on Zoom. What about, hey, Tommy. Uh, what about Vlad? I'm here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And Vladimir. Good morning. Happy New Year, everybody. Hey. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Colin. Hey, Doug. Happy New Year. And you. So, Ginger, I've got to ask, um, what, if any, relation is there between you and Derek? Depends on the day. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh, he is my big brother. Ah, okay. Yeah. Got it. Hello. Oh, hey, Colin. Uh, Colin, geez, Clemens. No, no, no. Hey, and got Scott. Uh, Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Hello. Uh, Christoph. Hi. Hello. Nine two five. Is that um, um, John Mitchell? That's me. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Bala, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Hello. Well, now we got lots of people showing up. Mr. Mark, are you there? Hi, Doug. Hello. And who was that? Oh, Ryan, are you there? I am. Yes. Hello. Hello. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Hmm. Ah, Jeff, you there? Yep, I'm here. Hello. Manoj Dani? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I apologize if I'm butchering it. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, okay. I'm from Pelio. I work with Ryan. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, which company are you with? Twilio. I work with Ryan oh, Horn. Twilio. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, he. Um, this is Ryan Horn. He, he works with me. Um, got it. He'll be, you know, stand in when I'm not available. Okay, sounds good. I'll make him an alternate then. Whoops. Thank you. <laughs> Mike Hemlick, are you there? Right here. Hello. Hello. Morning. Let's see. Did I miss anybody? Oh, Heinz. Yes. Hello. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. All right, one more minute, then we'll get started. Hey, Doug, this is Mohammed. I think you might have missed me. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you for speaking up. Well, we're, oh, there we go, three after. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's see, AIs. Uh, the only worth, one worth mentioning is this one right here. Um, Mark and Ken and I are having some offline discussions to figure out what we want to do going forward. Um, uh, in case you guys haven't noticed, not only is there a SIG app now in the CNCF, there's also a SIG runtime that's up for a vote. Um, so it's becoming even more muddied in terms of where we might fit, whether it's one under one of those or a new SIG or, or what. So we're starting to get some discussions there in terms of what kind of proposal we want to bring back to the group here to, to move forward. But just wanted to let you guys know that this isn't dead. We are still having some discussions there. Um, obviously, if, if you have some feedback you'd like to provide, uh, let us know and I'll pull you into those discussions. It's obviously not a very clear answer since this one's been lingering. So any brilliant ideas you guys might have would be wonderful. 
Um, all right, community time. Anything from the community that people want to bring up? Any topics that are not on the agenda that are worthy of discussion? All right, going forward. Uh, we do have a redesign of the website. Um, Luke, uh, I can't remember his last name, unfortunately. Uh, he is a CNCF uh, guy, though. Um, he did a whole bunch of different, uh, put together a new design, which I thought looked really, really cool. And I think it's going to be easier to manage. The old format was a little bit funky. So please take a look at it. If something looks wrong, please let us know. We'll get it fixed. Um, but I think it looks really good the new way. Um, so I want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Uh, KubeCon, a couple of things here. I believe by, I want to say January 20th, we have to get back to them in terms of uh, what sessions you want to host there. Uh, unlike previous times, uh, working groups only get one session. So I, and I believe it's a 35 minute session. Uh, uh, Full-blown projects, um, I think incubator or graduate status can have up to two sessions, typically for an intro and deep dive. So we can have two different ones if we want. Um, I'm open to anything here. My initial thought was to let the workflow have most, if not all, of the work of the uh, have the um, have the serverless working group session, and then use the cloud events deep dive and intro. I'm sorry, deep dive, yeah, deep dive and intro to talk about v1 status and discovery spec they're working on my initial thought was that we don't have enough for two sessions unless we make a whole bunch of progress and we could talk about deep dive on the discovery um but given it's only you know two months away i wasn't sure how much time we or how much material we have to actually fill two different sessions um i won't i'll, I'll open the floor now for people to have comments on this but we obviously don't have to make a decision today about this we have until the 20th to decide but is there anybody who has any comments one way or the other about ideas around this? What if we had a session about uh, SDKs and integration? That's an idea. Um, would that, I assume that sounds like more like a deep dive session, right? I, I think it would be maybe like a hands-on, very quick hands-on kind of session. Interesting. Like, like so kind of cloud, cloud events, uh, you know, how to use it in the real world? Yeah, like hello world for cloud events in, in one of the four languages that we could probably uh, have around. That's a, I like that idea. Um, but I'm assuming, I, I use, you are assuming though, right, Scott, that it would be one of those two sessions. It would not be a third session, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, yeah. you only have one. So the, the, the second one could be like, here's cloud events in practice. Like, yeah. here's real code. You can go home with a thing that emits or consumes a cloud event. Yep. OK. Now, when you say hands-on, did, did you actually have in mind people actually bringing their laptops to do stuff? Uh, I, yeah, I think so. OK. OK. Any other ideas? That's an interesting one. OK. Um, I think about it. Let me know. We can add more to the list. I do like that idea, though. Um, at least that would allow us to fill two two sessions for sure. So that would be good. OK. So as I said, think about it, and we'll talk about it again next week. Um, Service Practitioners Summit. They are planning on having one, I believe. It's, sorry. Uh, it's on. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, sorry, I had a hard time finding the unmute. Um, the, the, the one thing that we talked about in uh, San Diego was a little bit of uh, this is one thing with just the code. The other one was sort of kind of the data formats and what, what do the events look like and so forth, because I know there's been a lot of confusion, like what fields go where and so forth. And we talked about, I think, something like office hours. Um, yeah, you know what's interesting? <clears throat> At the last KubeCon, I remember there being a whole bunch of booths where it was almost like an asking anything kind of thing for different projects. Yeah, I need to find out, and I'll take the AI to do this. I need to find out if cloud events, now that we're at the uh, incubator stage, whether we get one of those, because that might handle the office hours thing you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, I'm not sorry. I just kind of chiming off of that. One of them is writing the code, which is processing events. The other one is sort of kind of like how do I design uh, things that take advantage of the cloud events. Okay, let me take the AI to, to look into that, and that will help us decide whether we want to do a booth kind of a ask me anything thing or whether we want to include that as part of, of um, one of our sessions. Okay, hold on a second, my phone is ringing. There we go, cool, thank you, Bile. Any other comments on that or ideas before we move on? Okay, uh, Practitioner Summit, it will be March 30th. 
Um, I believe the CFP for that will start, I think it's scheduled to start on Monday. Uh, so keep where, an eye where is that? that. Say that again? Where? Oh, it's a, it's a day zero event for, the, for KubeCon. So it, it's co-located just before the main KubeCon event actually starts. In Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, as I said, CFP should start on Monday, I believe. So look out for that if you want to submit something. A uh, question for you guys. I don't know how many people are going to be able to make it there, but I was wondering whether we should have a face-to-face -face meeting there. I was thinking, if nothing else, it might be good to do some face-to-face -face discussions around the subscription and discovery spec. I find face-to-face -face meetings tend to move a lot quicker than offline discussions, but I wanted to see what you guys thought. It's a two-hour drive for me, so yes. <laughs> and it does have a few comments. <laughs> <laughs> you saying? I know, I hear you. Anybody else have an opinion one way or the other? Hi, Doc. This is Kathy. So hey, for Kathy. the Hi. So for the face-to-face, uh, -face, um, can we include the workflow discussion too? I think we can definitely include that. Yeah, we can, we can see if we can find a, a couple hours and, and split up the time. Sure, we could probably do that if we need to, yes. Okay, thanks. Let me, okay, let me, let me turn this around. So I'm not hearing anybody jump up and down too much except for Clemens. Um, is there any objection to us formally saying we're gonna have a face-to-face -face there? So it will be a formal meeting and, and, and stuff like that. It's not just gonna be an ad hoc get together. Because I think per our governance rules, we have to allow people at least a two week notice um, for face-to-face -face meetings or something like that. I wanna make sure we get that out there in time. So is there any objection to turn this into a formal face-to-face? -face? Thank you, Mike. Okay, so I'll do whatever's necessary to try to find room for that and uh, make sure the announce gets sent out. So hold on, get a room and announce on the mailing list. Oops, all right. Cool. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, moving forward. Oh, I guess I should ask, is there anybody or any other things related to KubeCon that I'm forgetting to mention? OK, um, next, SDK. I think we do have a meeting scheduled for today. I never actually did send out an invite. Um, but we had, I think we did agree the next one would be today. Do we have a need for a call today? Do we, does anybody have any topics? I have a question. Yes. Um, which is, do we have an ETA for 1.0 of the various SDKs? It would be super convenient to know that. OK, tell you what, why don't we plan on having a phone call and discuss that, that topic? Sound good? OK. That's the right. 1.0 release of the SDKs or 1.0 cloud event support? Ooh, good question. Uh, I'm particularly interested in cloud events. Okay, cool. Let's talk about that during this during the SDK call or on this call if we end early. All right, cool. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> All right, Kathy, is there anything you'd like to update the group on the workflow stuff? Okay, so we have been um, working on the workflow spec uh, actively um, last few months, and we are thinking about starting uh, the work group. Uh, spec discussion meeting uh, on the weekly meeting on uh, soon. So I have created uh, a doodle poll for people to specify the time. So if you, anyone of you are interested in that, you're very welcome to join um, the meeting so that we can, you know, work together to move this um, into the, um, the right direction and also to make the spec very generic. I can post that to do the poll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you post place the URL there. here, that'd be great. Thank you, Kathy. Right. Yeah. So we, we're planning to start the meeting either mid of um, this month or maybe starting next month. Depends on you know people's feedback on the you know on the time to pull. All right. Cool. Any questions for Kathy about the workflow stuff? Or anybody else from the workflow team want to mention anything? I don't know who else is on. Okay, moving forward then. Thank you, Kathy. Um, not gonna go into too many of the issues here because I think I'm trying to work through people offline. There's just two things I wanted to mention. 
One is this one, and Clemens, I was hoping maybe you could take a look at it. They have a question about the Azure bus. Um, uh, you don't have to answer it here, obviously, but if you can take a look at that issue, since I think it's directed toward the Microsoft thing, maybe you could find the right person to answer that one. I will do that. Thank you, sir. And all right, so we can either blame or thank, I think it was Klaus for this one, but he noticed that our documents <clears throat> still say they're working drafts. So obviously I messed up. So the question I have for you guys is, how do we want to fix this? Obviously I could do a, and amend commits and move the tags for 1.0 release so no one ever knows about the screw up. That might be the easiest in terms of less disruption for people, but it is a little bit of a hidden kind of action. Some people may not like that. Uh, another option is create another commit for the 1.0 branch, but don't do anything else. Another one is to start the process of creating a V101. Um, I'm not too thrilled with 101 just for this, what's obviously a syntax error, but I wanted to see what, what you guys thought and whether you guys have any opinions on how to address this problem. Because I think, I think we do need to remove that text one way or another. Option two sounds good to me. Okay, anybody else? Plus one. Okay. I'm fine with two or, you know, if we really feel we have to move the 1.0 tag, then we could do that. But I think making this a one on one doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah, I, I, I guess my, my biggest question is, is not moving the tag going to be an issue for, for people? Not necessarily us, because we know what's going on, but for people outside of our group. I'm just concerned that someone seeing a 1.0 spec and saying it's a working draft might throw them into a tizzy or, or force us to get more questions than we need. I would, I would, I would just point them to the updated commit. Point them, meaning them, meaning the tag, or them, meaning the people. Point the people to what you do for number two. Okay. All right. I'm hearing lots of people for saying plus one number two. Yep. Lots of people saying number two. Anybody? Any? Anybody object to that? All right. Cool. I shall make it so then. Um, cool. Thank you guys. Do, 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 do. So, all right. Um, are there any other issues that people want to bring up? Otherwise, I was going to keep moving forward and work them offline, unless someone has one that they really want to bring forward. Okay, not hearing any. Moving forward. All right, discovery and subscription spec work. So, um, before we start talking about the spec itself, I wanted to talk about sort of a high order governance kind of issue or process kind of issue. Let me get down to it here. All right, so I, I started writing up some text because I think we need to update the TOC on what's going on with our work. If nothing else, to at least let them know <clears throat> that we're headed in this direction and we're, and we're starting this work. However, as I was writing it up, um, and I was talking to Mark about this, uh, we realized that there's a, basically a high order question for the group. And that is, this new spec that we're working on, is it a cloud events project or is it a serverless working group project? because that's going to change how we present this to the TOC. So for example, if it's a cloud events project, then I don't think we need the TOC's approval because the cloud event project, the, the cloud event project itself can decide whatever it wants to do, and, but we do need to make the TOC aware of it since we are a CO and CF project. So that's more just a FYI kind of a thing. However, if we decide that no, <clears throat> this really needs to be an independent project separate from cloud events, even though we are using cloud events, that puts it back under the serverless working group domain. And at that point, we probably do need to go back to the TOC and say not only this is something we want to work on, but we'll get the permission to start it up as a new project, not as a sandbox project yet, but just as a new piece of work that's sort of an exploratory kind of a thing. And th in that sense, we kind of, kind of feel like we need to get the permission, right? So I kind of need a, a sense from the group here. Do you guys view this as a, as a cloud events project that's starting out under the cloud event repo that may at one point get forked off and get its own repo, but for right now it is a cloud event project or is it a serverless working group project? I'd like to hear some opinions from people. If we, if we want to use the subscription and discovery APIs for anything but cloud events, then um, for anything other 
uh, than cloud events, then uh, it should be independent. If we think of that as something that we do for cloud events specifically, then it should be cloud events. I'm leaning towards having this being a cloud events thing. Okay, thank you, Clemens. Tim? Uh, hi, so, uh, so at, at uh, AWS, we actually, you know, we implemented a subscription and filtering um, capability specifically for AWS events, you know, which is our, our cloud events, if you will. And um, it turned out to be useful and was widely adopted by lots and lots of other services, including SNS and CloudWatch logs and some people in Alexa and, and so on and so forth. So the empirical evidence would suggest that if we were to, you know, specify such a thing, uh, the notion, it, it probably, its use probably wouldn't be restricted to cloud events in practice. Interesting. So Tim, uh, Tim to, to clarify that, do you think that the, where this project is currently would be able to be a sandbox project on its own? Or should it, should we, and I'm going to coin, coin the term here, should we incubate it within cloud events for some period of time and then split it out? I'm just curious your opinion on that. Oh, sure. That doesn't sound insane at all to me. I, the only point I wanted to make is that uh, such a thing has the potential to be, you know, quite broadly generally useful. So um, let me ask, for people who view this as sort of a cloud events type project, at least initially, does that mean that you think that cloud events is a required piece of it or it's just an optional thing that people can use? For example, you can filter on cloud events properties, but it's not a requirement that that, that be a first class thing in, in, your, in your interaction with the event producer when you do your subscribe. For me, for me, that's mostly in, an initial scoping question. It's like, let's do the what's required to identify. So first of all, to discover what cloud events someone can raise, and then can go and subscribe to those particular cloud events. And that's a little bit more specific than trying to uh, create an API that's uh, you know broadly um, useful for all kinds of event sources. So I would rather I would rather have something that's specific to cloud events but covers all transports, rather have something that is just HTTP and covers all the the, the entire world in terms of uh, uh, what the what the format is. Okay, cool. Thank you. Anybody else want to comment on this? I'm hearing lots of people. I I, I I agree with Clement's last comment, which is we should focus on. What, what are our needs within for cloud events first, but always have an eye for it could be more generic and could be its own project in the future. Other, other, otherwise we'll just work, it'll be too large of a scope and we probably would rat hole too much. Um, did I capture that properly here? Yep. Okay. Thank, thanks for editing out Rahul. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anybody else want to comment? Yeah, I think it's also possible to write a spec um, where you can use different parts, but not everything. Um, for example, in OAuth, you have these different authorization flows, uh, like four different ones, and you can use one, you can use another, but you don't have to use all at the same time. So I think the same principle could be applied here, that people can pick which part they use, and then it's properly declared which part they use and everyone understands what part of the spec is supported. Okay, so it's, uh, I wanna make sure I understand that properly though. You are, you are leaning, it sounds like you're leaning more towards what Mark and Clemens were saying basically. Is to start out with CE being sort of our scoping function but it's not necessarily a hard requirement that you have to actually use it. I mean, what, what I'm trying to say is we can marketing the whole thing as cloud events but then say this part of the uh, product is called cloud event subscriptions. So you're specifically supporting only that part of the product if you want to, Got for it. example, or you only support the, whatever we will call it, the event format. Uh, that would be the spec we currently have. Okay. Got it. Yeah. All right. Anybody else want to comment? So I, I have a question here. So uh, my understanding of the subscription discovery um, is should be, I mean, needs to be based on some format, right? Or some definition of the events. So now that we already defined the cloud events, 
I think that's naturally part of the cloud event scope. Because if we want to discover or subscribe to another uh, definition of events, we first need to have, I mean, that the definition or the format definition or the attribute definition of that type of event, right? So mm -hmm. I think naturally it falls under, that's my understanding, I may be wrong because I, yeah, I haven't participated in, in several meetings before. Yeah, okay, no, well, thank you, I appreciate that. All right, anybody else? I'm hearing lots of people speak in favor of at least starting out as a CE project. Is there anybody else that would like to voice a contrary opinion? I think this is uh, Ryan. Um, I, I think what's going through my head is um, if we start building out um, more um, uh, more you know features for lack of a, a lack of a better term um, that is coupled to cloud events, then using those independently uh, is you know more difficult. They have to buy into the whole ecosystem, right? So there's something to be said about um, you know having making it easier to adopt individual pieces, even if they um, in some ways uh, can be coupled or, or made better if they are using cloud events. There's something to be said about um, abstracting it out so that they are not, um, you know, that if I just want to use uh, the filtering piece or the subscription piece or discovery piece, um, I don't, I, I can use that with, uh, you know, a system that might already exist that isn't using cloud events versus, versus having to go and, and uh, you know, buy into the whole ecosystem. Is it fair to summarize what you just said as just as we move forward, make sure that if, if it is a cloud event project, that the cloud event aspect is optional? I, yeah, I think that's fair. And, and you know, I, I'm, I'm more thinking out loud than and providing a, an opinion here. Um, it's just something that's going through my head. That's fine. That's what we're looking for. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, I believe then the majority, or at least the majority, if not everybody, seems to be leaning towards starting out a CE project, and we may choose to fork it off or pull it out later, but at least for right now, using cloud events as a scoping function might be nice, or it sounds like people are in favor of that. So is there any objection then with heading down that, that path, and I'll work with Mark to write up the text or the ideas that we're going to then present to the TOC and give you guys a chance to flip it over before we actually uh, We'll talk to them because I think we'll probably have a week or so anyway. Sometimes it'll take a while to get on their agenda. Any objections with that? All right, cool. Um, okay, so that's what we decided. All right, moving forward. Um, let me just make sure of one thing here. Move agenda. Oh, <laughs> okay. So at some point, we don't have to say decide today, but at some point we need to decide what we're going to call the spec. So we can actually all refer to it by the same thing. I'm not sure cloud description is the right one because I'm not sure it accurately discover, covers everything. Maybe it doesn't dis cover discovery or maybe it does depending on your point of view. Don't have to decide today, think about it. If you have alternative ideas for a name, please speak up someplace in the doc or email or someplace so we can start thinking about it and possibly take a vote if there's other ideas out there. Um, but I don't want people to think that cloud subscriptions is the definitive name. Um, we can obviously change that. Um, next, all right, so moving forward. I believe the current scope basically encompass, encompasses two things, obviously discovery and then subscriptions. Um, I, every now and then over the last couple of weeks would start adding a little bit of content here and I think Klaus actually added some stuff down here in terms of event domains. What I'd like to do is, um, I don't think this phone call is necessarily obviously the best place to start having uh, wordsmithing discussions or writing text for the spec. I think we should do that offline. However, I do want to make sure that we aren't going to just sit back and hope that someone else takes the pen because if, if we do that, no one's going to take the pen. So what I'd like to do is ask if there's any volunteers who would like to not necessarily own, but at least take a first pass at defining some of the metadata that they think is necessary as part of the discovery piece. You know, for example, I, I tried to write down some things I thought might be interesting here, but is there somebody who would like to take a little more of a formal pen and say, okay, here's an initial proposal for the list of metadata that you would get back if you were to query an event producer for the list of events that they are gonna generate. Is there somebody who wants to take a first stab at that? Beyond was already there. 
Uh, I, I think it'd be important to look at the um, how we've done this in Knative as an example. I think we've captured, you know, maybe not the form that this needs to look at, but we've certainly considered all of these pieces of data. Okay. And I'd be happy you, that. Yeah. I, I was going to say, are you volunteering? <laughs> Yeah, happy to happy to help write that. Okay, so Mike, thank you. That was Mike, correct? Yes. Okay, cool. Anybody else want to volunteer to work with Mike on initial pass? Um, I'll help. Okay, thank you, Cummins. Anybody else want to join the party? I can also help. Um. Okay, thank you, Kathy. I have some opinions here. Yeah, I, th I was wondering if you were going to speak up there, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, unless somebody else wants to jump up and down, um, let's, just, let's, uh, let's keep it relatively small. But can I assume that maybe, Mike, since you were the first one to step forward, you'll take the action to reach out to the other, three, other folks? three folks? Sure. Okay. Um, am I going to offer some help? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, hold on. Jeez, I can't type today. All right. Anything else then relative to discovery uh, that we that people think we need to talk about? I mean, um, at least at this high level of sort of procedural next steps, we have volunteers to work on the text. Anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to move on and do the same thing for the next section. Okay. Subscriptions. Anybody want to volunteer to <clears throat> have offline discussions with people about filling this section out? I'll do that too. Ooh, Mr. Clemens. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, I can help that too. So this okay. is from the subscriber point of view, right? How to mm -hmm. subscribe to the... How to subscribe, yeah. And how to manage your subscription and stuff like that, yeah. I can help too. Thank you, Klaus. Anybody else? And okay. I obviously keep in mind that... Uh, I'm sorry, was someone speaking up there? I come here. Okay, okay. Um, Obviously keep in mind that just because your name is not on this list does not mean that you should not or think that you cannot uh, just put your random thoughts and text into, these doc into this document itself. Um, these are just the people that I wanna be able to lean on and poke and nag as, as appropriate as we, we keep moving forward to, to make sure we keep making forward progress. Okay. I, I can help as well. I've been thinking about this quite a bit um, okay. within Twilio. Um, so happy to give my thoughts and learnings. Okay, cool. Uh, with that, Clemens, can I count on you to be sort of the, the, the ringleader to talk offline as necessary? Yes, I will do that. Thank you. Um, does, uh, bit of, bit of, can you guys do me a favor? I know for some of you guys, it, you're on Slack and we can look at your Slack um, profile <clears throat> to get your email. But I'm not sure everybody's on Slack. So if you can, can you guys, um, you know, these four people here, and the guys up here. Can you make sure that your email address is in here so that Mike and Clemens know how to reach you guys offline? Sure. Can you get a chance? Yeah, okay. sure. Thank you. So, so okay. how, how, I have a question. How should we do this? Should we get on this back and start to putting our thoughts or should we start a, I mean, a meeting for a discussion and then how should we do this? So I think I'm, I'm going to leave that up to Clemens and Mike to decide how you guys want to work offline. Um, but feel free, Kathy, to put your comments directly into the doc itself, even outside of this little group of four or five people. Okay, I see. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. With that, let's turn this back around. Do you, is there anything about, say, discovery that you guys want to talk about on the call right now? Because we basically have a half an hour, and I think we're technically at the end of the agenda. But if we want to, we can use this time to talk about high-level things. Like, for example, does everybody think everybody's on the same page in terms of what the scope is for what 
discovery is going to cover. Do we want to have a discussion around that right now? Or any other topic? I have a question on the function signature. So um, what, what is the, um, what do people think about that? Well, I think we, we, we also had that items in the face-to-face -face meeting, right? For the next um, item to work on. Um, yeah, we, we basically took a vote and out of all the various topics and fu function signature was one of them. Uh, this is where we landed. Th this got the, th this won the vote basically working on subscription and, and discovery API. Um, we did talk about potentially having some offline discussions about function signatures in parallel. I don't think anything's happened with that yet. Um, but in terms of, a, a, in terms of first class next work item, it, it, it did not win the vote. But that doesn't mean people can't have discussions offline. Okay, I see. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, so anything you guys want to talk about? I mean, or do you want to adjourn the call or switch, switch over to SDK? It's up to you guys. I left a comment this morning uh, in the subscription section. Um, and I'm just curious what everyone thinks um, around filters. How prescriptive should we be around how those are specified and, and how they behave? So I guess the question is how much do we bake into the spec versus leave the semantics of filtering and, and how that's um, specified to um, the, the system implementing the spec. Can you, from my, actually, hold on a second. Tim, your hand is still up. I assume that's old, right? Oops. Okay, good. <laughs> Oops, answer my question, thank you. So I got a question for you, Ryan. When, can you be a little, can you elaborate a little on when you talk about this thing being prescriptive, because um, in my mind, I think if we're going to specify some sort of filtering thing, that in my mind it means what is the filtering expressions or syntax or whatever we're going to call it of the request that's sent over to the event producer when you're doing your subscription. And so it seems to me that if we don't define the meaning behind that syntax, you're not going to get interoperability. But I'm wondering whether you were thinking of something different in in what you're asking here. No, that, that, that's pretty much what I was asking. Um, and, and there are some questions that come out of that, um, such as, uh, you know, if I specify a filter, um, how it, do I get any feedback on you know, what that filter matches in terms of event types and, and versions when it comes to using cloud events? Um, so I'm just kind of thinking through, um, you know, how, how much of that we leave up to uh, the, the systems implementing this versus being in the spec itself. So, comment that? Go ahead, yeah, so prior art, so prior art reference. Um, uh, AQP has a filter mechanism and uh, that's on the, uh, and that's on the source, which means where, you, where you're getting things from. And there's effectively two levels of selection um, where first you're effectively selecting your, um, source, for lack of a better term, um, uh, from the server. You basically have a URI that's pointing to, to something that's in the server. And then there's a filter expression. And the uh, MQP spec itself stays away from being specific about that what that is, but it says there is a filter. And then there are extensions defined for MQP um, that then specify some filter, some filter syntax. Um, that's one way how we've done that because uh, there are um, obviously various ways of how you could do this. You could go and do a regex, you could do a SQL, you could do all kinds of, of, of ways of, of how to define a filter. And um, that seems to work fairly well. So I would, I'm not sure whether we, we should bolt, you know, the one and only way into the, into the specification. That's just my feeling. Anybody else have any comments? Does that answer your question, Ryan? Or is that? Is yeah, that... I think generally, I think, you know, I think, you know, as we dive into the specifics of this, we'll probably have uh, more detailed discussions around how we expose it. But I think your original answer, Doug, uh, was um, you know, answered, answered my comment, which is 
you know, it, 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 it will be, there will be some specification of, of how filters will work. Um, it won't just be, you know, a filter field and left up to the, um, the systems uh, implementing this to figure out what that actually means. And, and I think that's helpful for me. Okay. All right. Any other topics people want to talk about at a high level? I guess for either section, subscriptions or discovery? Well, um, I think I also wrote this in the questions on the comments uh, before uh, the holiday season. Um, I wonder if this is really going to be a contract between uh, producer and subscriber. Or, um, I mean, is this uh, maybe yes. <laughs> so, okay. um, because I mean, we, we have the cloud events spec. Uh, which enables us to send events across multiple hops to do routing and everything. So should really be subscription and discovery be then a thing directly between the consumer and the producer? That seems to be a bit um, um, asymmetric, I would say. So basically because of that, I, I introduced this idea of the eventing domains further below in the document. So just as some background why I wrote all this. Would you like to elaborate a little on what the event domain stuff is trying to, or what, what issue it's trying to address? Just give you some uh, background. You usually, as I wrote in there, you usually have some kind of, of middleware to route events, maybe even in case of cloud events uh, across multiple of those uh, hops. And um, I, I suppose uh, you will have producers and consumers and authorizations for them and, and maybe um, what I would call event catalogs, where you um, uh, maintain a list of what is available. So in, in this scenario, um, a consumer would query probably the eventing domain for event types or sources available in that domain. Um, the e domain could also organize the routing to other domains um, and uh, maybe cache the catalogs of other domains. That's just, I mean, right now just an idea to have this this notion of the eventing domain so a consumer would would uh, do uh, subscriptions via the domain a producer would um, offer what what it has to provide uh, to produce to the domain it just since, since i don't see anybody raising their hand um when you think about this to the event consumer do they know whether they're talking to a quote Domain as opposed to just a single producer is do, do they do they know do they know the difference in essence? I don't know yet. <laughs> so um, as there are quite a few people from Canadian in here anyway, so um, I think it would match quite well to the broker in Canadian. So just to give an idea, um, maybe in an extreme case uh, when you just have this direct connection between producer and consumer, the, they would both, um, so to speak, contain their own eventing domain because they would just be a single uh, participant in a domain. So it's, it's really about managing uh, eventing. Hmm. Uh, Tim, your hands up. Yeah, so I mean, it's always, I've always thought that one of the big benefits of the whole pub sub architecture is that you get strong decoupling. So the producer does not need to know who's listening. Um, and, and so, you know, the, the relationship is very, very strongly decoupled. And whereas there are certainly, you know, direct, sometimes occasional direct producer consumer linkages, that would be not the mainstream case. So, so I think empirically what we see in industry is typically buses that have lots of people dropping events onto them and lots of other people subscribing to them. And, and that's good. That's all. Yeah, it's kind of why I was asking the question because I guess in my mind, I always kind of assume that we're going to define this uh, subscription type model and, and even a discovery type model where the client who's talking to these things doesn't know or care whether they're talking to a, in essence, single event producer or an entire set of event producers that's behind, as you'd call it here, an event domain, right? Um, and this kind of actually gets to a topic I was gonna bring up if no one had anything, which was as I was writing down this list here, um, I started wondering what kind of grouping 
or how are things going to be returned? Let me put it that way, right? Are you getting back a list of event sources and then there's a list of events for each event source or do you get back a list of events and it includes the list of event sources that you might be associated with it? Or, you know, and you know I'm, I'm, I was trying to figure out in my mind, what is the right grouping or, or high order bits that people may get back when they actually do these queries? And I think that might be directly related to your events to your uh, eventing domain stuff class you're talking about there. Because if, if the notion of, of different event producers, which I think match to your event source, is a first class thing, then while we may not necessarily expose uh, the, the fact that you're talking to a, um, a domain as opposed to a singleton, when you actually look at the data, it'll be very clear to you because you know, all the source values are the exact same versus they change constantly, right? I'm not, I know I'm kind of rambling, but I, I think it is related to what I was trying to work through in my head in terms of how the data is structured when it comes back. But Mike, you have your hand up? Um, yeah, so you know, this, this is something we thought about uh, a lot about in, in terms of thinking about you know, representing all of the various event sources that we would have just at Google as a provider, for example. And to think about coming at it as the various event types that are available for us first, is just going to be like a deluge of information for somebody who wants to consume something and that um, you know our customers typically think about it as the the event source first so the, it's like a funnel right the, the least specific to most specific um, you know I know I want something from say uh, you know, Google compute engine okay what event types does that have and thinking about the funnel that way um, the thing that doesn't address is if you have event types that you may be able to get from multiple producers, but I think that's more of a special case and you could provide a pivot for that functionality. Yeah, I think that's where my head kind of landed too, which is why I, I started writing out something like this down here, right? Oops, I don't want to do that. Okay, uh, anybody else have any comments or uh, thoughts on um, Klaus's stuff down here? You guys are awfully quiet today. I, I did have one comment um, just yep. to, uh, so um, we, we've seen it come from the other way as well at Twilio where um, a customer might want to receive events for a particular source. So for example, a phone call um, that they make through Twilio, um, they you know, are you know, running their own state machines on their side. Um, and they want to subscribe to events from that one particular call or um, an IoT device or a SIM card, et cetera. So um, I, I do think that, you know, thinking about it from both ways are, are both equally valid for us. Interesting. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, last chance. Any topics you want to bring up? Otherwise, I'm going to assume that the ringleader, ringleaders, Clemens and Mike, who volunteered, will hit you guys offline to start writing some text. Okay. Yes. I believe, uh, yeah, I believe, hold on a minute. Okay. In that case, we could technically end the call now, unless anybody has any other topics they want to bring up under AOB, any other, any other business. Otherwise, we'll switch over to the SDK call. Any other topics you want to bring up? Okay, in that case, before you guys start abandoning us, hold on, let me do the roll call again. Um, Falco, are you there? Falco? What about Luke? Did we lose Luke? Oh, Luke vanished. Oh, what about Thomas? Here. Okay, Thomas, I, I see Falco trying to come offline, so I'll give him credit for that. Lionel, you're there, right? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, and Eric? Hello, I'm here. Hello. All right. Anybody else I missed for the roll call? Hey, Doug, this is Christian. Oh, Happy hey, New Christian. Year. Happy New Year. Oh, gosh, I, you know what? I meant to say at the beginning of the call. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> I completely forget to say those kind of things. All right, anybody else that I miss? Okay, in that case, if you are not interested in the SDK side of things, you are free to drop and we'll talk next week.
And please don't forget to add comments to the, uh, to the new spec as, as you can. And thank you guys very much. We'll talk again next week. And we'll start the SDK call in about a minute or so. Thank you. Um, goodbye. Bye. It's snowing. Is it? Is it a good snow or just a light snow? It's a. Uh, looks like it's sleeting a little bit in Seattle right now. Ooh, oh, which means it's already devastating. Seattle and snow is not compatible at all. No, no, the city's like, oh god, apocalypse! It's done. We're just everyone move. I saw <laughs> so a bus no, run no into. Couple. a 2020, it already, it's already started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to assume, though. A hilly city with snow is just bad news. It I have to assume, though, you guys... Fires. There's a lot of people would learn. Well, you guys have to handle snow better than they do in, here in North Carolina. I mean, they're really yeah. bad here. But Because you, you guys must get more snow than we do, at least occasionally, right? So uh, the worst, the worst thing about Seattle is that because of uh, the salmon and and generally protecting the environment, the city of Seattle and all the the, the towns around Puget Sound do not s put salt on the street, uh, and uh, that is fairly devastating because it's uh, uh, you know there's a ton there's a ton of hills, which means you have city like there's. Annually, when there's a little bit of snow on the street, there are annually you see pictures, YouTube videos, and everything of city buses just sliding down the hills. It's amazing, but still, I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised the city buses. I'm, just, I'm surprised the city buses don't put on some sort of chains or at least those wire things that aren't quite as destructive as chains. Yeah, no, they put on chains or it really needs to, but otherwise they just slide around. Interesting. <sighs> All right, I think we got rid of everybody else who doesn't want to be here. Let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, I think so, we've so set the I stage don't... for the SDKs with those comments, so let's go. <laughs> Thank you, V-Lay. <laughs> Doug, uh, I, I need to drop at 10, so uh, don't, don't call on me after that time. Will do. Okay. All right, so Tim asked a question. When are the various SDKs going to support 1.0? Anybody want to jump in there? C-sharp does. Let me let me let me refine that a little bit. Um, okay. Actually, I, I, that was the wrong question. I, I I want to use the SDKs in a production uh, application, and being a wimp, I would like to not do that until they are stable. Um, so that's the real question I'm asking. Ah, uh, okay. If you find if you find bugs, you're welcome to fix them. <laughs> Fair enough. But, uh, so, the question I'm, I guess I'm really asking is the design of the APIs. Uh, considered stable. I, th I, th I think we need to list out the SDKs and then have each of the teams that are committing to them make the make a comment because yeah. I I I I would say that the Go one is is fairly fairly stable. Uh, the rest of them I just don't know. Yeah, so like I was going to ask <clears throat> Tim, which which SDKs do you care about, or do you care about all of them? Um, go most. Yeah, so Go is actually in transition to V2. So the APIs might change a bit. Do you have an ETA on when that might be stable? The, the API in general for V2 is uh, fairly stable, but it, it needs more integration. Uh, where we continue to push on uh, this this concept of you can you can pick what how much of the opinion the SDK provides you so you can you can use it without the client you can use it without the transports you can use it just as an object that marshals itself in and out of the formats supported so I think to answer that question properly would be um, I'd have to list out all of those layers and say which ones are stable and which ones aren't? Wait, wait, would that be good to do as open an issue saying, here's, here's the stability and then be, be able to update that? Yeah, I, 
Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, we. But but we are, going because you're saying V two, how is V one? Is V V one considered a stable API? It's it's fairly stable. I think we've found all the places that need to be adjusted to support things that are being used. Uh, V1 uh, is is everything that's in the Cloud Events PKG Cloud Events directory. V2 is everything in the PKG bindings directory. And then there's some migration that's happening. Is that that answer the question. I mean, it, it might be kind of pertinent to start up a, a Go SDK kind of like bi weekly call for a quick check in for people that are using it and have questions and want, want answers or need features or, or have bugs or issues or what, whatever. There's some folks doing some performance improvements in the Golang SDK right now, and it, the memory overhead got a lot reduced, or it will be um, as soon as this PR merges. I guess another question to Tim is, have you or, or anyone on your team taken a look at the current Go SDK and have questions, comments, or what level of stability they feel it is? Yeah, I, uh, I did look at it. I actually used it um, uh, to, to build something. And uh, it dropped some comments in, but they were sort of generalities about architecture, not specific API arguments I have and I think I'm pretty sure what I was using was one point was the uh, uh, the one, release one um, so I haven't looked at that uh, release two at all I'd love to re to understand how much of the SDK you're going to use like is the client piece important to you or is it just the the transport bindings uh, oh I, I want to convert some of our internal stuff into cloud events so I want to generate cloud events and then, right, right. And then but like are you going to are you going to take the client and use that, or are you going to start by just taking the event piece? Just and... the event piece. Okay, that that helps me focus on which parts I should uh, um, kind of like stabilize in the V two stuff. Yeah, basically, I want to generate cloud events, and um, I'd like to have a stable library to do that with. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Um, Clemens, did you want to talk about this, the status and stability of C-sharp? Um, well, I consider that uh, the SDK to be uh, stable um, as it is and supports, and it supports Cloud Event 1.0. Um, and the, the one thing we're going to, we're, I'm going to do there is uh, add um, and I'll round things out by adding all the transport options. I'm not sure I have, have them all there yet. I think there's NATS, I think it's missing. Um, but otherwise, um, I'll, I think this is mostly done. Okay. Any questions for uh, Clemens? Do we have someone on from the Java one? I apologize, I can't remember who owned that one. And there's JavaScript too. Oh. Okay, well, do we have anybody from any of these or anybody that can speak to any of those four? I think 1.0 is supported in Java. And I think 1.0 may be supported in JavaScript because there's been a lot of activity there. Okay. Uh, yeah, Vlad thinks that only Python and Ruby do not. According to the releases on the repos, both Java and JavaScript support 1.0. I mean, they have adding 1.0 support in release notes. But I don't know how comprehensive it is. Yeah. It's in the notes. Okay. Um, are those the only SDKs we had? I can't remember. Hold on, let me check. <clears throat> do, do, do. Mm, hold on. Okay, we got Go, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, Ruby, and Python. So I guess we got all of them. Okay. John Paul C 
Jeffy Sharp. The ass is on 1600 East Olive Street in Seattle. And is zero point Who's that from? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions, comments? Anything else you guys want to talk about relative to Tim's question? I mean, Tim, did that kind of help answer your question? Yes, thank you. And I'll, I'll pay close attention to the go work because I'd, I'd like to move ahead with this stuff as soon as possible. But, but yeah, just generally speaking, I think it would be great now that, you know, you, uh, we've shipped 1.0 and banged the drum about it, if the SDKs were stable and marked stable really soon. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's a totally valid uh, ask. Tim, are you, are you in Seattle by chance? Vancouver. Vancouver. That's close. Do I come down sometimes? So let me ask this. Is it, is it a question of document? It sounds to me like it might be a question of documentation in terms of the website explicitly saying, hey, this thing's stable, as well as some sort of formal uh, minimal 1.0 type release kind of thing, right? Because a lot of people don't think anything's real until it's well, at least 1.0. I think what Tim is asking for is a uh, SEMVR compliance so that, you know, like, you can actually trust the version. It's not going to do API breaking changes. Is that fair, Tim? Yeah, SEMVAR would be just fine. I mean, it, it's great that 1.0 has shipped, but there's not that much you can practically do with a specification, right? <laughs> if I actually want to use this thing, you need code. OK. Uh, let me see if I can poke on the, obviously, C Sharp and Go are covered by the guys on the call here. But let me take the action item to poke the other folks offline and see if we can get them to be a little more formal with their uh, releases and, and documentation and stuff like that. Let's see if we can get something uh, more concrete out of them. Okay. There's also some work happening to potentially make a TypeScript library. Who's working on that? I think some folks from Google. I'm sure we. I'm sure we get another uh, repo created for them if they're interested. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Th there's been some discussions inside the JavaScript uh, team or JavaScript repo that because TypeScript and JavaScript are kind of like same-ish, or it compiles down to JavaScript, so it, it conflicts a little bit, or it's duplicated work. Right. Right. Bye, Bile. Um. Okay. Are there other SDK topics in general that people want to talk about? I, I have a, a, I have a topic mm -hmm. for a second. So uh, a while ago, you know, so the, the reason why the Golang SDK for cloud events has a client is because that's, that's the operating model that uh, Knative uses. And so it was convenient to kind of like hoist up that code and implement that uh, in the official SDK and, and then other people can continue to use that, that client. And it, it makes a couple of opinions, but basically it's, it's very flexible for the implementer to implement exactly what, it's, what it means to do certain things. But cloud events, the, the specification doesn't really talk about this client piece. And so I was, I was wondering if there is it should I look at pulling all of the client pieces out of the SDK into some other some other repo that imports the Golang SDK for cloud events and that just becomes the binding piece or is it fine to have it in the repo and you just ignore it if you don't want it yeah, I can only speak for my own you know usage but that would be great because um uh, you know, I, we're interested in, you know, generating cloud events uh, and parsing cloud events, but, you know, using various uh, different kinds of underlying transport and so on. Um, so a lot of the stuff in the client library is probably not terribly interesting. So it would be nice to have just the data stuff. Yeah. So what, what I'm doing with um, C Sharp, just, in, you know, to show things, uh, I'm trying to do things in parallel. Um, all the, if I can, I only have the transport bindings which refer really back to the core.edge framework. And I'm staying away from doing anything that's product specific, specific. And I'm using, for instance, for AMQP and for MQTT, generic 
um, uh, protocol libraries, which are um, which work with with any product, and uh, for uh, event hubs and service bus and uh, event grid, we're um, going to put the uh, the cloud event support into the SDKs. Uh, since those are being rebuilt right now, we're actually building some extra library that, with extensions. But uh, we keep all of that stuff out of the um, um, out of the cloud event SDK. So it's basically just generic, completely generic libraries with no tie-in to anything that's uh, a specific product, project, or anything. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing specific to Knative inside the the GoLang library, and and the exercise has actually been really good for me to think about other ways to use it that aren't what Knative does. But but again, like it's it's more code than uh, like a Tim Bray integration story might use. Exactly. Sorry, folks. I got I got to check out. So thanks. And hey, if if you want to talk to me about this stuff, uh, you know, I'm easy to find. Okay. Yeah, I'll reach out. Thank you. Just to have a slightly contrarian view. I, um, I, I would actually prefer if they were all in the same repo, but have a clean separation, just because I think they go, they go hand in hand so much that even if you are like in Tim's world, where you're only going to use one, one side of it, um, I think there will be enough people that will want to use the, the transport side of it, that having them sort of look at the documentation or deal with two separate repos might be more annoying for people. So as long as there's a clean separation in one repo, I don't I don't see a problem with that. But I don't. It's not a huge thing either way. Okay, I, I, maybe it's just a documentation story. Because yeah, Cause, yeah like, cause I, I, maybe it's incorrect. But I kind of look at it as, you know, the simplistic thing is, hey, the, you know, I, I can use these transport things and it handles the cloud events and it covers all this wonderful stuff for me. But if I need to go around those and do things more advanced, I wouldn't have to. I don't want to just have to jump over to a separate repo. I want to look at it as more like an advanced feature and jump to the CE library itself. Right. I mean, the, the consequence is that the Golang SDK is basically a function framework um, and that you can shim in and out transports. Yeah. Which is cool, but like probably scope creep. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Any other topics we want to bring up? Okay. Now, Scott, you had mentioned possibly setting up, you know, biweekly phone calls. Um, since we never really have too many topics for this call, you are welcome to, to use this call if you want. Um, I just, just okay. point that out there for you. If you yeah. If you, Maybe I could put it on like office hours on the, the website itself in the repo. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anything there else before we, uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Doc, you might remember we had this discussion and, uh, uh, issue around um, nested events oh, yeah. and I was wondering so um, I had this action item to, to finally uh, add some sample how do you would do uh, nesting with events and when I was working on this I, I ran to this well problem that um, if I use the example of having a, of nesting a structured mode event into a binary mode event that right now it wouldn't really work with um, with uh, SDKs, basically, because we recommend to to distinguish between binary and structured mode by looking at the content type. So um, if you have put a, one event with, into another event and therefore set the content type to cloud events JSON, um, SDKs think that the auto event is already a structured mode event. So basically miss the binary mode event. Interesting. Yeah, because we did talk about this. And <clears throat> the spec right now, as, as Klaus said, it doesn't normatively say it, but it definitely says it, that you should look at the content type to decide whether it's a cloud event or not. I was wondering whether we should modify the text to say, look for the presence of the CE spec version header. To know whether it's binary or not. No, 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 no. This, this is a, a JSON a structured event that has mirrored attributes, and the spec says that when when we have a, a mirrored case like this, that the source of truth is actually the body, and then they should match. Um, 
I think I'm thrown because you said they're mirrored and they're not. Well, they're, they're supposed to be mirrored, right? Like there's allowances for, uh, you can duplicate data and hoist it up into the headers if like downstream it's easier to process it like that. But mm -hmm. I think the event that the Doug has posted here 20 days ago is actually invalid because it, it goes against the, the spec and w according to the spec, the, the type is cool event, not my event. And this is actually an error. Huh. Yes. Interesting. Exactly. That's, that. that's right. Because, because this is, uh, I think we have language that says it allows you to go and project the, uh, from a structured event, you're allowed to put the, the attributes into the headers. So but though they must be the same. This is not the nesting case. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. So if, yeah. If, if you send a structured event, it is okay if you go and use the same mechanism as as for the uh, as for binary by by mapping your attributes into the header so that the infrastructure can see them because we have to assume that the infrastructure has no visibility into the payload encrypted or not so that's why we allowed that so this is not nested now the nested the the nested case um is nevertheless interesting switch that to application json and uh now it or what, what's the what's the header for binary oh, so the, nest, the nesting case were were would be if you so so it could so if you stare at this one that's actually the 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 um this could serve as an example if you if you send the, the the event my event and that event my event carries as payload this inner event, then what is the right content type? I think it's the the, the binary header. Well, that's what the binary pattern is. Did I get confused? And this is this the content type here. Application cloud events plus JSON means binary. No, it's not because content type should t talk about the inner content type. Oh, yes. I see. Oh, I see. This is where the confusion is because the inner content type is application cloud events JSON. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> oh yeah. So that's what the nesting case is. But you know. The nesting case. So, so Klaus, do you actually have the nesting case? No, it's um, <laughs> in the beginning, and uh, I so, thought about this. It was really in the early days of, of cloud events, and, and I opened up that issue, and um, so that got back to me on that, and and I promised to um, to add an example for this. And are these Ger German engineers? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> As I said, we are not using this. It's just. <laughs> I'm just checking. <laughs> well, so, so let's, let's back up a second here, because Scott, you, <clears throat> you, you said something interesting at the beginning of the discussion. You said that you thought this was an invalid cloud event. I, is it or is it not? Because I'm inclined to say it's not invalid. It's just not necessarily the right descriptive text for it. Because um. I don't think you have to necessarily have the, the, the cool event type match the CE type my event on the outside. I don't, I don't think you have to. Well, no, this is. Because if, if, if you pull out the inner event, right? That the, no. the, 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 okay, the HTTP body of this is a valid binary cloud event in essence. No, 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 this is a, so, so, so the content type says this is, a, this is structure. Or yeah. the outer one structured, yes. Yes, the outer one, the outer one is structured, and the inner one, and then the inner one counts. No, wait a minute, no. The outer one is binary. The inner one is structured, but the content type in the on the headers is supposed to apply to the outer piece, and this is yeah. talking about the inner piece, and this yeah. is the only signal we really have to to know what the body should look like for binary. I I think that this should be content type application JSON plus cloud events because that's the extension instead of 
how to interpret the entire payload. Well, I don't think that changes the question that the Klaus has, right? I mean, to me, you're right. The content type says, how do you interpret the body? And the fact that we're using it to figure out how to interpret the wrapping, meaning the HTTP headers, is probably incorrect. That's why I was thinking we should change the spec to say, if you want to know if this message coming across is an HTTP, I'm sorry, is a binary cloud event, the presence of the CE-spec version header is the way to go. Except that doesn't go across the wire on uh, structured mode. That's right. Well, no, on, on structured mode, well, the, the absence there it tells you it's structured cloud event because that's when the content type says it's a cloud event. Yeah. Right, so it's, it's almost like a dual thing. It's like, okay, is this a binary cloud event? Yes, so I, because you see the CE spec version header. If the answer is no, it's, then you don't see that header. Then you look at the cloud event, I'm sorry, you look at the content type and say, okay, is this a structured cloud event then? Then in this case, yes. I yeah, think the so Golang I, SDK would look at this and drop the my event attributes. Yes. Because because of the fact that you can mirror or sorry, uh, uh, was project up the in, inner pieces, it right. would assume that those headers there that are cloud event headers are projected and we can be dropped because we can just look in the body and get the same data. Well, but wait so, a minute, Scott. I, I agree with the net result. I think. Well. I agree with your interpretation of the net result, but I disagree with why it happened. I think, it I think you're dropping it because content type says, oh, this is a structured cloud event. Right. I don't think you dropped it because of you making it a conscious decision to say, oh, the content is duplicated. I think you, you purposely don't even look at the headers because of the content type value. I, that's right, it, it short circuits and says, oh, okay, cool. It's a, it's a structured cloud event. I don't care about anything else in here. Right. Yes. And you're both same same thing. Yeah, but I th but I think it's interesting though because if if the spec and, and I and I suspect you did that because the spec says look at the content type header to make this determination as to whether it's binary or not. Yeah. And I'm and I'm suggesting to you that if the spec said the presence of the CE spec version header says that it's binary, I think you would have coded it that way. And this may not have been an issue for you. No, well, but it should, but but no, but the the content type the content type header needs to take precedence, because because you um, you want to be able you want to be able to make to make the fact that you're carrying a cloud event transparent to infrastructure, which means no. that even though you're carrying something that's a structured event, you still want to clue the the broker in that there's that it wants that it should be able to route you know by event type yeah um, actually i disagree I, I i disagree because the fact that you <clears throat> the fact that the payload is a cloud event is something that i think should be irrelevant to the receiver infrastructure because i would not want the receiving infrastructure to in essence unwrap it yeah, but right. that's the point. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't want to have the, the, the routing infrastructure touch it, but you still want to be able to dispatch ev uh, events based on what they are, you yeah. need to tell the, cloud, the infrastructure about them. And the way you do this is through transport metadata. Right. But okay, let, let, let's, let's, let's change the scenario here slightly. Let's say instead of content type application JSON, I'm sorry, instead of application cloud events plus JSON, let's say it was just application JSON, right? Yes. The, 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 yeah. fact that the, the fact that the body looks like a cloud event would be irrelevant to the receiver in infrastructure yeah. perspective, right? Now, you would then take that JSON and perhaps based upon the content type, do some routing, or you would just pass it on to the application and, and it would be expected to figure out what to do with it, right? Yes. Now, why, because you put the word cloud events in there, does that model change? I would, I would assert that it, it, this it, is still a binary cloud event. So it does not, but, but because it doesn't, the, the, um, the information that is contained on the outer, um, on, the, on the metadata and in the inner event must be the same. N no, 
That's only well, yeah. no, but in one, but, in so, one case, in so one case, like, go ahead. Show, show a different example where you take uh, this exact same format that you're showing, except uh, actually do the propagation up, where my event becomes cool event and xxx is the ID and things like that. The source is bigco.com. Well, how would you interpret that? Is it is it a double wrapped cloud event or is it the promoted piece? I would say in all cases, the application is going to get a chunk of JSON that looks like what you see there on the screen in the, in the body. And it, there may be additional metadata carrying alongside that says this is JSON and, it, and, it, and that's just extra metadata. To me, this is a binary cloud event and the payload just happens to look like a cloud event, but the infrastructure doesn't know or care about it. It just passes it along. Uh, that's not what the spec says. I agree. But I don't, I don't see how you can interpret this particular message any other way. So if I use uh, structured mode for the outer event as well, it would be valid to have nested events, right? Yeah, that's it's easier to understand what it means. Yeah, but, it, uh, sure, but, but you still get the same net result, right? In, the, in both cases, you would still, as an application author, you would still receive a chunk of JSON that looks like this HTTP body. But a piece of infrastructure that receives this um, nested event in both in structured mode and is configured to, to forward events in binary mode um, would still create this uh, message, wouldn't it? Or would it have to, to prevent this? I, th I think it would send out a, a content type of application JSON, not application cloud events JSON. I think that'd be perfectly valid for it to do so, but I also think it'd be valid for it to have the smarts to know that it that this isn't just generic JSON, it's a cloud event JSON, and it can put the word cloud events in the content type. I, I don't think the presence of the word cloud events in there changes the processing at all. Uh, it, it definitely does. I, well, I know, it, I, know, I know it does in the SDK, and I know the spec pushes people in that direction. I'm just wondering whether the spec is wrong. Well, p potentially it's wrong to hijack the content type. Well, but the content type is, yeah, I think we need to go back to first principles about what the content type is there for, right? It's first and foremost there to describe the HTTP body. Right, but, but it gets a little confusing because the spec also allows structured mode to promote inner pieces into the headers. Correct. And that's, that's valid and it should, they should be exactly the same. Yes. And the spec says, you know, if they don't match, the thing you should trust is the inner body. Wait, you talk about structured or binary? In structured mode, it can propagate up the type and the ID and the things and stuff like that. And if they don't match, the the winner is the body. Correct. Wait, I'm 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 I'm, I'm I apologize. Maybe I need lunch. <laughs> when you talk about in structured mode, things getting pop pop propagate it up. Those aren't CE dash headers though, right? They are. they are. But that's not structure, that's binary. No, 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 no. That's not true. You can use the binary mappings for the headers to, um, to promote inner pieces of the metadata of the envelope of the cloud event to, to make processing easier. Where's that in the spec? Holy crap. Is this related to that whole tracing stuff we talked about? It came up in this tracing discussion. Yes. Yeah. Oh, mamma mia. Where is that in the spec? I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking for it already. It's, yeah. it's uh, that is in the HTTP spec 323. Okay. 323. And they're batched? 323. Oh, doy. Implementations may include the same HTTP headers as defined for the binary mode. But that doesn't necessarily say they're, they're copied from the content. It just says you can add those headers. 
Well, that's what that implies, is that you can use the same like. headers in HTTP structured mode, uh, sorry, in binary mode, or sorry, in structured mode, you can also have the same headers as if it were a binary message, but it should be right. interpreted at the end of the day as a structured payload. Crap. It, not crap, great. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> Well, no, it, it is, it, 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 it's crap because now we're ambiguous in terms of, you know, what does, the, what does this thing actually mean? No, we're not. No, this the spec says that uh, you throw away my event, uh, 123, 1234, and example.com because they don't match the, the inner actual cloud event. Correct. This is, this is effectively, the, this is malform. Because it should be coming, it, it starts, the content type says this is structured. And so now you're at liberty, if you want to, to go and promote data, the headers out from the inner, from the inner uh, cloud event um, into those headers. And then the infrastructure can see them, but the, the authoritative event that, that's being carried is the structured one. My recommendation would be to add a new content type that's application JSON plus cloud event. And if binary mode would like to carry a, stru uh, a structured cloud event, it, the body is first application JSON. It happens to be formatted as a cloud event. So the cloud event part is the extension. Now I see why you said that, thank you. Yes. See, Scott and I vehemently agree and that should tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna quit for the day because this is great. Ah. Klaus, what do you think? I think we just spent yes. a lot more time looking at the data format like this. Yeah, it sounds, sounds good. Uh, but I have to think about it a bit more. And I actually have to leave the call soon. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm, uh, I'm half an hour late to a group meeting. OK. Well, thank you guys for and thank you, Klaus, for remembering to bring this up. I completely forgot. I didn't mean to, to, to add it to the agenda. Yeah, I thought it was more leaning towards the um, implementation details of the um, SDK, so that's why I brought it up in here. But it was no actually more an uh, spec discussion. Yeah. The, uh, quick question: I, Would we actually need to formally say that it's an app slash JSON plus cloud event, <clears throat> like in the spec someplace, or is this the kind of thing where? Um, we could just talk about it in the primer and we're just following a well-defined pattern as defined by HTTP. I, I think it could be a primer thing, but the, uh, the specs might need to know how to key that. I'm sorry, the SDKs might need to know how to interpret a uh, application JSON plus cloud events. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So Klaus, you'll go off and think about what, how you want to handle this, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This was a cool discussion, though. I liked it. Okay. Anything else before we hang up? I know we're way over. Yeah. Whoop. Okay. Thanks, guys. We'll talk again yeah. next time. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye.